Welcome to this last video of this lecture series. I want to sketch a proof for the little theorem that we saw at the end of the section on Sarsa. So what's the setting? We have the Sarsa algorithm with some stochastic policy P, and we assume that it has been applied for a long time. And here it's just the standard update rule. I've added hats just to indicate that in Sarsa I have a fluctuating quantity Q hat of SA. And now I have two strong assumptions. The first one is the learning rate eta is very small. And the second assumption is all Q values have conversion expectation. And that means that the expectation of the updates of delta Q hat SA is zero. And then the claim is that these uh, expectations of the Q hat are Q values that solve the Sarsa equation. So two statements to start with. I don't show that Sarsa converges to the Bellman equation. Rather, it's if Sarsa has converged. So if it converges, then yes, we are going to find the Bellman equation. And then the second one, if that is not true, it's not the Sarsa that converge, it's the expectation value of Sarsa, because Sarsa itself will always fluctuate a little bit because I have a small but still finite learning rate eta. And now let's sketch the proof. And here is again the update rule for Sarsa. Let me start with two little modifications. I will, I will move the eta to the other side. So I have a one over eta here and I cut the eta. And then I just want you to remind you of the fact that it, we are working with expectations. So all of these are Q hat. These are estimates of what is going on. And now I use the hypothesis and say the expectation of this is zero. So I have zero equals expectation. The eta is a factor. It goes in front of the expectation. Expectation delta Q SA. And then I have here expectation with regarding to the reward in the next time step. I have gamma times expectation and then I have my Q hat, and this one also has a hat, Q hat S prime A prime. And then I have minus expectation and I have Q hat S A. First remark, this expectation is always given S A. That means I am on a specific branch. I started in state S and I already decided to take this action A. And now I take the expectation of all the things that can happen afterwards. So what can happen afterwards? Having taken these actions, this action A, I can have several possibilities to reach a state S prime, this one or that one, and there might be five different ones. So I have to take this into account. And once I'm in the state S prime, I have to decide, I have again possibilities that, which relate to the policy I take in this state S prime. So let's work on this and uh, just evaluate this looking at the graph. So what's the expected reward? I take my sum over all possible states S prime and then I have PA S to S prime times the reward, the reward I would get, and I have to take the expectation of that reward. So this just gives R of this transition S to S prime. And then let's 
do the same thing for the next transition, for the next expectation, I have gamma, then I start again at this branch, Q of SA. So I have first my branching ratio over all possible next states, P A S to S prime. And then I have an expectation over what is going to happen from there onwards. So I have to sum over A prime, and then is the expectation of expectation of P, the policy, S prime, A prime, times Q hat of S prime, A prime. I close the bracket, and then this term here, still remaining, I shift it to the other side. So I would have here E of Q hat S A equals, this is the equal sign, uh, whatever I have put on the right hand side. So this first term has already been nicely evaluated. Here I still have an expectation over two things, P times Q. Now, if the policy P of S prime A prime were a fixed policy, fixed parameters, then I, could, then I would be able to just move it out of the expectation. However, the policy might be the softmax policy or epsilon greedy. In both cases, it depends on Q. And now I have something, a function that depends on Q, the policy function times Q. So it's no longer linear in Q. It's not simple to take the expectations. And this is the moment when I would like to use that eta is small. If eta is really, really small, then I can take many, many updates, many trials before the Q values will change to a level where it really, where it really makes a difference. So I can take my expectation while Q is still more or less constant. And this is the approximation which becomes more and more exact if eta is very small, if eta goes to zero. Of course, eta has to be still tiny, otherwise no change ever happens, but it can be very small. And so while I do my statistical, statistical averaging, I can consider the policy as constant. Okay, so with this in mind, I just rewrite now what I found expectation of Q hat S A. So let me write that, write this Q hat S A equals, and then I have sum over S prime P A S to S prime. You see that I have the same term twice. I fit here and there. So I will put it together. I will open a bit, a big bracket. Then I have the reward at the immediate time step S to S prime plus gamma. I've taken care of the green part. So it's now sum over A prime P of S prime A prime times expectation of Q of S prime A prime. And I'm done. I'm done because this is the Q value up here and it's connected to the Q value down here. Well, it's not yet the Q value, but it's the expectation of my slightly, just tiny little slightly fluctuating Q values. So this is sort of Q of S A and this is sort of Q of S prime A prime. So my expectation values solve the Bellman equation. 